Hello, fans. We're taking a brief moment to recognize and show our appreciation for the incredible support of our sponsors. Their commitment not only fuels our content, but also ensures we can bring you the very best of the airgun world. Firstly, a huge shout out to Southern Precision Air Weapons. Ken is a master of hard-hitting airgun tunes that deliver unrivaled accuracy. Moving on, we extend our gratitude to High Pressure Pneumatics. Be sure to check out what Tom has going on at his store in Michigan and online as well. Let's not forget the remarkable contribution of Donnie FL. Their innovations in suppressors have revolutionized the experience in the field, combining stealth with performance. A special thanks to GX Compressors as well for their robust and efficient compressors that are an absolute game changer in the pneumatic technology and convenience. And lastly, we express our sincere appreciation for Sabre Tactical. Their tactical gear is not only about strength and durability, it's about taking your air gun experience to the next level. We proudly stand alongside these titans of the air gun industry and invite you, our valued listeners, to explore their outstanding offerings. Supporting our sponsors is directly supporting the air gun geeks, enabling us to continue delivering you the content you love and trust. Thank you for being the most essential part of our journey. Your engagement and support make all of this possible. Until next time, stay tuned and keep supporting those who make the Air Gun Geeks a reality. Welcome, Air Gun Geeks. Today's a special podcast. Bill, first off, is came in from California here to Florida, enjoying the low humidity. Wink, wink, not. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he's been done crappy weather out here in Florida. I gotta tell you, I, I'm a little spoiled. I think we're the spoiled ones. <laughs> I agree. Um, so we did some iguana hunting since Bill's been here, so we've exposed him to that. We got some highlights coming up on that fun event, and Bill's a crack shot at the iguanas. Absolutely exciting time uh, that we've had here, and um, and we'll put some images up right here to uh, to show the effect we were able to have with our uh with our air gun prowess i came out here originally for the air gun uh iguana sniper challenge mm -hmm. that jessica put on she did a fantastic job and pat i think the one thing i was most impressed with about that contest was lauren parsons as a match director and mc just took total control of that event and really put on a great Ran show. It like it was so the my hats off to AOA and and you know landing somebody like Lauren and putting on a an amazing show that day. She kept that whole herd of rebel rousers focused and on point and and really did a great job putting on. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. It, it was like it was the fifth year event and everything was planned perfectly and all of that. Even when there was a little bit of stressfulness, they're like, eh, and everyone flowed with it. We had a blast. Met all sorts of people. People came from all over the United States, which was exciting. Uh, it was a good, it was a very good time. Uh, I can't wait till next year. I'd like to know if anybody traveled further than I did for that. I that I talked to, I think you are absolutely the farthest because Lauren would be number two. Yeah. And then the rest came from like Tennessee, all over the state of Florida, which was exciting in itself, um, because this was the second extreme field target in Florida. No, the third, mm -hmm. the third one. So oh, yeah. it's really taken off. Uh, those that weren't there, a lot of the donators um, to it put in money to buy actual extreme field target targets to stay here in Florida, and they paid for a trailer to transport them. Yeah. So 2025 is going to be awesome. Absolutely excited for the upcoming year. Yeah, very much. And, you know, for me, it was my first foray into extreme field target. And I've, you know, I've shot a few field target matches, regular field target. And it was a heck of a lot of fun. But word to the wise, you know, like any competition, do your preparation mm -hmm. do, be ready know your gun really well know what it's like when it's not working well know what it's like when it is working well and how to recognize that because you know i i had some flight challenges getting out mm -hmm. here and ended up delaying what would have been our practice time pat had tire issues lots of stuff ended up meaning i didn't get the dope on my gun before mm -hmm. that event and it allowed Pat a little advantage, and he 
he actually uh he edged me out in the field target game and i'm like man i've shot so much more field mm -hmm. target than you how did you beat me and the answer is uh well number one it's a really good shot and number two i didn't go into this with the right preparation i didn't have i didn't devote the time that i should have to that now my gun performed exceptionally well because he was able to beat me with it yeah he beat me with my own freaking gun <laughs> And you when know, you're good, you're good. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just didn't mean to boast. Sorry. Well, I turned around and beat him in the Iguana Sniper <laughs> Challenge, which was a paper challenge, largely because he had a mechanical failure yep. on his gun. It wasn't working yep. up to par. And, you know, again, it was a preparation thing. Mm -hmm. It was all about that. Spending that time to be ready to go. And I will, I will not make that mistake again. I probably will, but. And I'll probably talk about it again, but you, you got to go in with your with your A game. And, uh, you know, it was a heck of a lot of fun. I got some cool stuff at mm -hmm. the raffle, I'm not going to lie. I mean, that was, uh, I definitely made my money back on the raffle tickets. So, so did I. Plus there. And uh, now I've got to ship all that stuff home to me. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. That was and, a great time. Yeah, I... I have really come to actually love the act of stalking and hunting iguanas. Now, I, I have a little different game than Pat does. Pat is the he's gonna go in, short action gun, he's gonna he's gonna bring the bring the fight. I'm the guy who wants to hang back. I've got an advantage in distance and energy for my crown. I can just lay back and snipe the holy crap out of them. And the nice thing is they don't see me. They they don't know there's a problem, and you know they're just looking over the iguana next to them. Hey, what are you taking a nap for? And then, boink, then they're gone. So it's to me it, it's a it resonates well with with who I am. I've always had the image of me being a sniper mm -hmm. in my mind. I okay. think so. For me to live that out was a heck of a lot of fun. So yeah, I definitely definitely got into uh, the iguana hunting scene. So. You know, on that topic, Pat, you've got some opportunities for folks, fans, to book correct an iguana hunt with you. And I gotta say, uh, it is Target Ford certified A plus. Do it. it; you'll have a great time. So, those that want to go on a hunt, uh, besides doing the fantastic podcast, the Airgun Geeks, with Bill and our soon to be introduced guest, mm -hmm. uh, you can check out No Lizard Extinction. Too many things going on in my head. LizardExtinction dot com. And we offer different rates, whether you have an air gun or not. Um, I will say you need to get ready for the humidity uh, and be properly prepared. But we will take care of you. It is tons of fun. Many of memories will be made. And uh, it's, it's a growing sport down here. And you actually have to hunt them because they do move. So and, and Pat's got an adventure van that puts Scooby-Doo to shame. So you get to ride in the adventure van too. Possibly, yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, um, I want to introduce someone that I met when I moved down to Florida and have been chatting with before I moved down to Florida. And he's opened his arms and his heart. Um and we built and it's up. a really big heart. It is. It uh it's been a long journey because it takes time to gain trust. You can't just give it. Um, and that is something I've learned, and I want to introduce a really good friend now, Johan from the Iguana People or Sunset Aquatics. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm glad to be here today. On a note that you you guys went to that uh, that event that Jessica uh, did, I, I heard that it was phenomenal. One of our guys, LW, uh, a.k.a. Pappy, I guess, mm -hmm. was there. Did you meet him there? He shot right next to me. Yeah, he's, he's a great he, guy. He's a hell of a guy. He's going to be coming on with us now on, uh, on more of a full-time thing um, because he's going to be doing some other things in his life, which is great. We could always use somebody like Pappy. I, I love mm -hmm. him to death. And great job, Pappy. I'm sorry that you couldn't make it here today, but it's a great job that you're doing out there. And I'm glad that you were with two guys like this. <laughs> you know, to do that. Um, so I, uh, I do, I do the whole iguana thing, but I do the whole catching thing as far as with the snares and everything. Uh, we use certain types of air guns here. We use, uh, uh, Curvon and Hatson. 
Where do you get those, Sean? Um, I get we we have a, a guy named Pablo from Airgun One. Mm -hmm. He he sponsors us. He took us on when we were rather young in the industry. I think, uh, believe it or not, I think we only had like two or three hundred subscribers, you wow. know, at the time. And he and we were, we came in and and he just felt as though that, you know, we had the gumption to move and he, he said, must have seen something he did yeah. he, he did you know um first and foremost i love people that's you know that's one of the things um and and anything that you can reach out of a dream and grab hold of yep. is, is is not just a dream it's a goal to me you know mm -hmm. but we'll get back on to that but you know pablo from air gun one he's right down there in west palm beach um you know, you'll probably find the uh, the information down below here. Yep. Um, I don't don't know exactly the address, but it's in West Palm Beach off a of military we'll trail. Find, we'll find um, you'll find the link down below if he adds it. You know, but I'm sure that I'll give it to him and he'll put it on there. But we only had like a couple of hundred subscribers, and he felt as though that you know we were a great team. You know, because we were we were killing them left and right. I mean, man, uh, the guy I got shooting for us. Uh, you know, Grabby, we call him Grabby. I won't say his legal name online because I don't have his permission, but we call him Grabby. You'll see him on a lot of my videos. He shoots that gun, that curve on from Turkey. They're out of Turkey. Mm. And I'll tell you what, they pack a punch. You know, um, they're a great, great weapon. I've, I've, I've seen him hit them like from 100 yards with this thing, you know, and, and that's it. They do rolls, you know. So, uh, yeah, but we use Pablo. Pablo is 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 a great guy. He's uh, stuck by us. He's given he gives us a new gun like every few months. Every time he gets something in, he gives us a new gun to try. And now you know we're up to like almost fifty thousand subscribers. You know, and uh, and it's and it's really good. We gear ourselves, you know, to make a family here. We feel as though that if we're all one together. There's there's nothing that we can't move, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we're aggressively getting jobs overseas. We're using all of our our iguanas for everything. We use utilize the heads. We utilize the bones. We utilize the skins. We utilize sometimes the flesh for for grinding up and and selling to uh, the crab market on the other side for bait on the on the west coast. So there's so many things that we can do. When I say there's so many things we can do, there is. All of the bones go to reptile art, and they used to do uh, replica things and, and stuff like that. So so you're not only removing the iguana. Yeah. But you're also repurposing that tissue for a lot of really positive purposes. Yeah. You're getting that. You're getting that that flesh that extra flesh that you have in the hands of fishermen mm -hmm. crabbers, mm -hmm. those guys you're getting the hides in the hand the hands of italian leather people that are doing the tanning yep um and you're using the bones so every component of that it's really amazing yep to the tune of four hundred thousand a year yep. wow exactly wow. so you know it, they, we come from nothing you know when we first came here um i i, I only had my two sisters you know, um, Debbie and Pat that 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 took me in. I had nowhere to go. You know, it's like I said, I, I I lost my my only daughter. I was so depressed on where I was living. I decided, uh, you know what? I says I came down here and I went hunting with a guy named Raj, Raj the Iguana Man. You know, I I, I did a tour with him. You know, I paid my two hundred fifty dollars or whatever it was, and he took me out on a tour. And that was it. I got the bug for the air guns and, and, and everything else. It made me so happy. I went home and that was it. I packed my things and I came back to Florida. And my my two sisters gave me a place to stay on their couch. You know, I stayed there for, for three weeks, you know, and and, and I would go out and, and I would just walk the canals and catch stuff, you know, by hand with the with the big pole. And until finally somebody from the state stopped me and said, hey, do you got a card? And I'm like, yes, I do. And, you know, I gave him a, a piece of paper because I, I went to Office Max. Yeah. You know, and I and I designed like a thousand piece of flyers because what I was doing was I was wrapping them up with, with rocks. Mm -hmm. And at night I would drive around and throw them on people's lawns. You know, but anyway, and I gave him that. And he, he said, hey, give me a call. And next thing you know, 
I, I'm doing, you know, a, a state educational facility, you know, my first contract over $30,000, you know, and that was it, you know, and it, it started to escalate from there. I got Grabby, I, you know, I got Ollie and, you know, they're the greatest team I got. I got Pappy and, you know, I got, now I got Pat, you know, uh, you know, we're all going to be putting our heads together. And, uh, you know, we're working on a real big deal with skins right now. So I need hunters that, you know, that'll incorporate with me because I got an order for, you know, 250,000 skins to go to Europe. And if you guys can <laughs> want to jump in, in with this deal, you know, you need to contact me in a link below. And just to make a point here on that exact topic, Pat and I have actually saved an entire cooler full of iguanas there you go for the man here so uh i i was trying to get pat to let me skin one uh but he's like oh, i mean we're gonna do that i don't have any salt oh, okay all right, all right. <laughs> that's fine yeah. next time i will i will come here armed for for skinning an iguana yeah, we... not because i i really want to cut on an iguana but just because i love the opportunity to learn and you know i i harvest animals regularly on my farm mm -hmm. uh, and you know taking them apart for me is a chance to learn how to yeah. put them together how do they you know what what is the process so you know i that is something that really uh really tends to geek me out it doesn't i'm not grossed out by it at all i love having a connection to my food mm -hmm. that is real and honest right and I think, I think being able to know this is what it takes to go from four legs walking around to dinner table. Right. That's that's you honestly accepting who you are as a predator. And I I'm, I have to apologize to all you vegans out there. We weren't born vegans. You may have decided to become one because you had a really good acid trip or something, <laughs> but. But the reality is, we have two forward-facing eyes for stereo vision. We have canine teeth. We have the ability, some of us who aren't old and overweight, to run all day long. That was our advantage in the wild when we were just another one of the animals. We could outrun every game animal on almost every continent. Not speed-wise, we're not gonna do that, but time-wise. We had the ability to cool ourselves, we are predators our, our everything about us is predatory and if you are honest with that and you're open with that and you want to seek enlightenment a great way to do that is to understand your connection to the animal world and i think i think that may have been a large part of johan's yes. enlightenment while they've been here it, it is because like i said as i've gone out for invasive species um you know, I, I've seen the other end of it on a domestic mm -hmm. animal issue that we're having. You know, um, when we get out there and on these things, you know, we, we're finding animals, you know, that are abandoned. We, you know, sometimes we go and we do an iguana job and there's 20 or 30 chickens running around that are owned by nobody. You know, so what happens there? That's also becoming a problem for our mm -hmm. ecosystem because if you've got wild chickens running out there, what makes you think that they're not going to stop up on a bee nest or something or a beehive and start eating all of the, the larvae out of that? You, know, you just can't have domestics running around. People think it's cute. Oh, let me throw these rabbits out here and do this and do that. But you know what? They breed like they breed like rats. You know, every 21 days you've got kittens running around and you know what? They're going to ruin your, your ecosystem. Yeah. You know, you can't have that. You so. must have balance. You've got to have got to. You've got to. System. And that is the, that's the essence of ethical hunting yep. and everything mm -hmm. else. We, you know, we, we work hand in hand. Uh -huh. Hunters and, and wildlife management are part of that solution. Right. Hunting is not evil. Hunting is not bad. No. Hunting is a necessary part of controlling animal population because if you really want to see an animal suffering watch a deer in an overpopulated area that oh, yeah. can't sustain the number of deer in that area that's that is a really tragic way for them to go and you know i, I just think we're better yes. at managing that than than just letting them die yeah from really awful deaths so you know i 
I, I get it. You know, everybody, everybody's been affected by the Walt Disney effect. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Walt Disney gave all of these animals very human personas, and everybody wants to play the violin. And oh my God, it's, <laughs> it's so bad. What are you doing? Uh, the reality is very different. You yeah. are a predator. Yeah. You need to embrace that and be honest with yourself about that. It, whether you choose to hunt or not is not right. what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But at least appreciate the honesty that comes from the people that are doing that work. Yeah. And we're not, not a bunch of evil, knuckle-dragging rednecks <laughs> running around in the woods. We're, we're intelligent men that are, are trying to use what talents and gifts we have to, to bring some balance back to the yeah. ecosystem. So would you not agree, Johan, that when we're out removing iguanas or invasives, a good portion of it is education. Yes. With the people that come up, right? the client himself, yes. on why we're doing it, what we're going to do with the animals, mm -hmm. they're going to be treated right, or we have to do what we need to do within the law. Yeah. And we're not just going to sport shoot the animal no. and throw it in the garbage can. No. And, and that's one thing that a lot of people that I've come across have said to me. Yeah. Well, you're not just going to throw them out. Absolutely not. No. And it's really impressed a lot of people with that. They're like, oh, well, we really like what you're going to do with that. Uh, we're going to utilize every bit of it. Um, a lot of it, I like to work with the kids. So I'll get an iguana. If he's alive, then, you know, I hold it and we talk about, well, what's the pros of this animal? Oh, they're beautifully green. And just to caution you, be very careful yes. if you're picking up a live iguana. Yes, a lot of ticks. It can really screw up your world. Yep. Hey, Airgun Geeks family. We've got some exciting news to share with you today. We're thrilled to announce our new partnership with some of the biggest names in the outdoor world. Airgun Depot, Cabela's, and Bass Pro Shops. This partnership means that when you use our special links to shop at these stores, it won't cost you a penny more but it directly supports the Airgun Geeks podcast. We're really proud to be working with these outdoor giants, and it's all about helping us bring you the best coverage of the Airgun world. So next time you're gearing up for your next outdoor adventure, remember to use our links. You'll be supporting us and helping keep the content you love coming. Yeah. So we talk about it, and we talk about like the negative sides, like they carry ticks, their nails, their tail. Them big spikes really aren't the dangerous part of the iguana. It's past them when it gets real low. Yeah. And I have people touch it and they're like, oh, that's sharp. Yeah. That's that's what could hurt you. That's what could hurt the dog. That's their defense. Yeah. Um, and then how big they can get in their colors. And you know, I had an iguana up north growing up. Her name was Samantha. And she'd run around the house <laughs> and she was fun. I never even understood what was going on down here. And this iguana problem started over 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. And Johan, what I just found out from the FWC current estimated guest of iguana population by 2026. In, in, in the millions. 70 million <laughs> iguanas. Yes. And now they're coming north. Yes. And um, it, it's not going to end. So doing it ethically, ethically, doing it efficiently is the way to do it. If you don't do it, you're going to have a problem. I go, it's a lot like doing rodents, you it, know, they are cute, but we don't want them in our house. Yeah. You know, you don't want to go to the toilet and see anyone looking at you, which has happened uh, a lot more than expected. Okay. And to be honest, we're, we're never going to own this war. No. We're never, it's not a war you can win. No. It's a matter of determining where they are, where they can be and where they can't be. And you've got to go with a pointy, pointy end and stick and move them from the areas mm -hmm. you don't want them and, and it, you're never going to win that fight it's no. like it's like rats on my farm right. i it's a constant battle yeah i know I, i'm fighting a multi-pronged attack on them i've got traps i've got i've got uh dogs that are right. brilliant right. at killing rats i've got barn cats that right sustain themselves yeah. mostly on on, yeah. on the rodent population you can't use poison because you have other live right correct yeah, right. yeah and you know and i love air gun hunting yes yeah. i mean exactly. yeah technically that's not hunting that's pesting i get yeah, it's it. pesting <laughs> but honestly you you learn you you know hunting any animal yeah you've got to understand that animal on a very foundational level you have to know their behavior yeah 
it's like going fishing and not knowing anything about fish. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to have more time sitting there drinking beer <laughs> than yeah. you are actually fishing. But understanding that fish, understanding what, what stimulates them, then you, all of a sudden you're you know, in, on the Bass Pro Tour, you know. Right. It's, it's that difference. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot to learn, a lot to know. And uh, and you had mentioned your channel, mm -hmm. Johan. What is your channel? Let's take a moment to, to so, talk about your channel. My, my, cha my channel is called Sunset Aquatics on YouTube, mm -hmm. okay? Um, the reason why I call it Sunset Aquatics is is because well, Sunset Park, is 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 a fun place where I used to live mm -hmm. in New York. Um, I was always into aquatics. Um, many years ago, I would raise koi fish and ornamental goldfish. I did I did very well. Matter of fact, some of some of you guys may have known at one point in time, Walmart's had koi and goldfish. Mm -hmm. The reason why that is is because I was one of the ones who used to grow for them. Mm -hmm. I had eleven accounts with 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 Walmart. And uh, I used to sell them all kinds of goldfish and koi and stuff like that. Um, the the problem is is what that happened there is is that they had to phase that out because they didn't have anybody who was really educated in aquatics. Yeah. And and if you ever went down to the system, it's not like I'm going to bash anybody. I'm not trying to bash anybody, but they just didn't know the procedure, you know. Um, is and how to deal with that and so. it, you know in their defense it's yeah. kind of hard to have a commodity yeah. employee exactly exactly and a very specialized knowledge set needed to keep those animals alive. exactly and so they're in conflict and that's not yeah that's not good business yeah so but you know like i said with that i also i also like you know uh critters i i mm -hmm. love critters you know i'm just not an iguana slayer listen it doesn't necessarily have to be iguanas Anything out there that it's invasive is not good, you know. So if mm -hmm. we have a, a thing where we can use them for something, mm -hmm. it's always good. Right now, even the invasive tilapia that we're gathering, I'm trying to figure out how to use the skin for leather. You understand? Because we had heard from a, a group over in Southeast Asia um, that using tilapia skin as leather for wallets. Hmm. So I had one of one of my rep sounds fishy. Though. Yeah, it does sound very fishy. <laughs> but but the contract the contract is eight dollars a skin. So wow. but you know, and if I sold them forty three thousand pieces, you do the math. Oh yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So that's, hey, that's, 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 I'm that's always good. looking. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> I'm always looking yeah. to to get into something. You know, so if I can use something. If I can use skins for this and skins for that, from what I understand, there, from what I understand, they're using some of the skins we we use, and they're manufacturing a man-made product with the product that we have. That's making sheets of this stuff, and they're making bags out of it. They're making shoes out of it, wristwatch and thing. So all of that stuff is being used. Um, sometimes we get we get orders for the whole head, you know. They they're using the the skull for you know. So they're using the skull to to manufacture heads for for T Rex models. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll use artificial bone, but then they'll ask for you know a hundred thousand legs cut from the from the shoulder down, and they'll use that. And 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 if you're and, looking for that kind of thing, here's your guy. That's it, man. If you got if you if you hunters want to join, like I said, man. When I first put the Iguana people together, I come from a very long line of organization and stuff like that. I want to put a group together that can solely build on one one mode. You, we all work together. We all make the money. We all get our share. And that's yeah. it. It's and for all you tinfoil hat wearing individuals out there, it's not talking about lizard people. Yeah. He's <laughs> no. talking about people who work with lizards. Yeah, That's people. Very yeah. important <laughs> distinction. Yeah. Yep. Just like Jim Morrison said, I'm the lizard king. I can yeah. do anything. There you, there, you go. Go. <laughs> there you go, man. But no, seriously, on a real side, if anybody ever, want, any of these hunters ever wanted to get with me and sit back and talk about what you can do, I have the connections. You know, um, in a group, we can move a mountain, guys. You know, it's 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 just not up to one person. There's so much work out there, mm -hmm. 
And it's, a lot of it's not even here, and y'all don't even know it because you've never been outside the United States. Mm. The market outside the United States right now is the best market in the world. You know why? I don't have to tell you why because, you know, what we got going on in our country. But I'll leave that for another story. But yeah. someday it's going to be fixed. Yep. And it'll be great again. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. So uh, on that note, um, again, we use everything that, that we use. We, uh, we don't leave anything go to waste. And so far it's been good. You know, um, we're looking for a few more good men. You know. Uh, that sounds like the old Marine Corps. Yeah. Well, that's it. You know, um, you know it's, that's how it is. There's always a brotherhood. You yeah. understand when you mm -hmm. got when you got when you got them kind of people together. Yeah. I was surrounded by that kind of life, you know, for the better part of my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have I'd rather have ten good brothers mm -hmm. to take on the world than, than fifty. Yeah. You understand? Because with ten good brothers, you can move anything. You can move the world, guys. Yeah. You know, trust me. Great. Been there. Been yeah. there and done that. And I you know it's like I said, I'm picking my team. I got a great guy here. I got a great couple of guys that work for me you know understand and that's it and we're moving we're moving it man we're doing it and you know we didn't expect this and it's like i said i have to i have to thank god first always thank god first i thank him thank him for letting me get up every day most people don't ever hear me saying that but you know it's like i said i was a very sick man when i came down here yeah. almost 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 400 pounds you know now now i'm moving around and you know, cut all my medication because I'm doing something that I love. Yeah. You understand? And this is where we're at. And I'll tell you, by next year, I'm, I'm going to be in a better place than we're at. Because, like I said, we're going to have a full organization of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Most don't understand it. But, you know, Pat, people like myself and Pat, we're all government minded. Mm -hmm. We all we're, we're all we're all we all want to get that same thing, that same piece of that pie. And, and you know what? The, ser the, the service, you know, state and, and government government stuff like that, you're always guaranteed an income. Mm -hmm. you know, you know, and, and that's it. You know, there's there's no ifs or buts. Every 1st and 15th of the month, your check is there. Nice. That's where you got to be, man. That's Very where good. you got to be. Well, thank you for your time today. Yes. Yes. I really appreciate your insights and sharing yeah, your farm with us. Oh, absolutely. It has been uh, it has been an eye opener. Yeah. Your knowledge of aquaponics and, and the relationship of animals to yep. the ecosystem has been uh, has been a joy to share with you. Great. Yeah, I want to learn more about you. Thank you. Thank you. It's like I said, I, I want to thank you know, a lot of the people that started me started me up. Well, I watched a lot of them on YouTube. You understand? Mm -hmm. I watched every every one of them on YouTube, and and I, and and even though that they were young and I'm sixty years old, I learned a lot from them. Mm -hmm. You understand? But I was that guy that sat there at the end of this this thing here, and I said, "Damn!" I said, "I would love to try that someday." Don't ever think that you can't. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because once you try something that you have interest in, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's sewing. I don't care if it's, you know, riding a horse. If you ever feel like you wanted to do something, yep. sit down and pray about it and get on the ball because follow that dream. That's it. You only live once. I think Elvis said that, right? Follow that dream. Yep. yep. There you go. All right. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. And don't forget, stay geeky. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording. Shut it, shot